guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Caving. My name is Kasha and I'm your host and today, whoa, we have lots of reflection. Let me just take off my glasses. This might be a little better. But today is a super, super exciting day because I am unboxing a fish that I've wanted to get for a very long time. And luckily, Mackenzie from Floor Aquatics who is another better breeder and we did a better swap a while ago, went to one of the International Better Congress shows and was able to pick up this mystery pair of fish back here. So why don't we unbox them and see what I got? And now the moment of truth. We're gonna be unboxing these guys to make sure that they got here okay. I love how McKinsey kind of went sicker crazy on the entire box. Some people say that it's best to actually not label your fish because they are worried that people at the postal service will mistreat the fish, but I like to err on the side of caution. Plus, uh, in regards to the rules for fish shipping, you're supposed to label your fish and then you're supposed to do certain things. Like for example, wrap your fish up in a bag to help prevent leakage, use insulation. In this case, I've never kind of seen this type of insulation before, but oh, we see the first fish and we have a live fish, which is super, super exciting. So here I am checking the fish and I'm gonna show you a close up so you can see which show it was. This is the female Beta Mahachai and as well as who she was bred by, which is very important because this is a wild species and I wanted to have a captive bred wild species. So it's very important to know who your, uh, who bred your fish and where your fish came from. In that case, to just make sure that you didn't get a fish that was caught in the wild. So here is the male, super excited, super spunky, and he survived his journey. So here I am temperature acclimating the fish. What this means is you insert your fish bag into your aquarium or wherever you're gonna keep the fish and pretty much keep them for about 15, maybe to 20 minutes so that the temperature of the bag can adjust to the temperature of the tank and this will prevent the fish from being shocked by a sudden temperature change. So much glare, but it's crazy, when I first got him out of the bag, he was completely yellow. And when I was getting pictures of him, he was a little stressed out from being at the show, so he was yellow. And look how quickly he's turning colors. They can change colors depending on kind of how they feel. Of course, they can't change to every color, but their true color comes out when they're happy. And this guy is turning blue, so I'm gonna have a blue Beda Mahachai, because I believe they can be blue, I think they can be maybe red, I think. I have to look it up exactly which colors they can, they come in. Now the female is just over here hiding in the leaves. She is temporarily jarred until she settles down a little bit and then she'll be moved over. After I released the male into his tank, I kind of left them alone. So here is an update later on in the night. As you can see, it's not super, super exciting at first, but when the male realized that I uncarded the female and he can see her, even though it was really dark, he was aware that she was there, he got super, super excited and tried his very best to try to get to her. The cool thing about Beta Mahachai that makes them different from Beta Splendens is they are a more peaceful type of Beta. This means that not only a male and female can coexist in the same tank together, but if they do spawn, they can actually raise the fry together. Even though they don't really raise them, they will tolerate the fry in the tank, won't eat them, and will allow the fry to grow up in their tank alongside them until they get larger and start to kind of pose a threat then you would jar the fish like with Beta Splendens. Once the male got a little tired, we finally got to see his coloration. I slowed it down a little bit so we could all enjoy it. He is now become a very dark bodied fish with some blue iridescence. In the wild, their natural habitat is actual brackish water and the areas where they have been collected have been actually highly polluted and yet these fish have been able to survive the, um, the pollution and the quality of the water. Their pH where they are caught is usually 6.8 to 7.8 and there's a salinity of 1.1 to 10.6 parts per million. Luckily, they don't have to be kept in water that has any salinity 
I like to add salt to all my better aquariums, usually a tablespoon per five gallons. This helps prevent certain diseases such as velvet. I might maybe raise the salinity in this tank a little bit, but I do want to make sure that the Anubis that are in the back will be able to adjust to it accordingly. The next day I knew that I wanted to add in the female after they've had two meals of bloodworms and over here all of my uh, African cichlid juveniles decided to investigate. Those are some judeochromas, some yellow labs, some red zeros that all kind of flocked over and were very curious about the new fish that has been become their new next door neighbor. So I added the female, I didn't film adding her in because they are really big jumpers and I wanted to really focus on paying attention to what I'm doing so that the fish doesn't jump out and injure himself. But as soon as I added the female, she kind of hid under the leaf litter and the male began to flare. So we finally got to see his form, which was very exciting. Fish fins as nature intended. After a while, the female also came out and she darkened up as well, which indicated that she was finally settling in and she was starting to show some breeding stripes. Although I am not entirely encouraging them to spawn just yet. So the water in this tank levels quite high. And once I think I would like for them to spawn, I will lower it and adjust everything more accordingly. I'm kind of hoping that this will discourage them from spawning and will just encourage them to kind of hang out together because I do want to condition them a little more, fatten them up and get them to be in a good place to be able to handle the rigors of spawning. Ultimately, they will end up doing what they want because fish do what fish want to do. You can't force them to do anything. But that being said, because it is springtime and it's going to start raining and raining more in Illinois, that will encourage them to spawn because it has been proven that bettas, anytime it's raining, the weather does affect them and encourage spawning behavior. So here, let's take a closer look at the male and the female. He is quite lovely and it is very cool to be able to observe these fish because they're so similar to betta splendens yet they have some subtle differences so it'll be fun to compare to both especially because domesticated bettas are technically hybrids of betta splendens, betta smergdena, I can never pronounce that one, betta embellus uh, and as well as betta mahachai and they possibly say betta stigos so your betta that you have at home might actually actually have a little bit of Mbeta Mahachai in it or any of the other varieties. The reason that I wanted to get these fish was I thought it would be a great opportunity to really learn more about Betta Splendens by kind of looking back at some of the roots of where these fish originate from by looking at the wild varieties. Now it is tricky when it comes to acquiring wild fish or at least the wild strains because you have to be very careful where you get your fish from. So you have three options. You have a wild strain, a hybrid, or a domestic strain of a fish. So with the wild strains, you can either get them wild caught or captive bred. In my case, I wanted to get captive bred because it is a lot easier to keep a captive bred fish because they adjust to captivity a lot better. So as you can see, these fish are out and about and they already are not scared of me after being with me for one day, which if they were wild caught, they would be right now hiding and very afraid. So there are definitely pros to going out of the way to try to obtain captive bred fish. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the purity of the actual line. So where the was the fish hybridized along the way or is this a pure strain that eventually derived from the wild? This is why I wanted to get a fish from the International Betta Congress because they are a pretty reputable source to acquire your fish. That being said, I'm not actually against keeping wild caught species if there is a good reason for doing so, such as breeding to help a population in the wild or keeping an invasive species. And of course it's raining just when I put this pair together to even encourage them to spawn even more. My weird, my weird timing. So thanks for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. 
brighten up my rainy day and subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And now for some bonus outtakes of derbiness. Hi guys and welcome back. I just bumped into my camera. <laughs> that we're gonna find that about that. Yeah. Can't words. Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha and I'm blurry for some reason. Why? Why?